All right, guys. So uh, Twitch is down, uh, and I don't have uh, other options like YouTube set up currently. So I'm just gonna go through the stuff. Uh, we got two portfolios, and then we got critiques. I'm going to just do. Uh, I'm gonna do what I normally do. I just won't have uh, time to or the ability to answer questions. Uh, yeah. Anyways, all right. Let's uh, let's do this. So first off, we've got uh, Jose. Mr. Jose. My dad's name is Jose. Hey guys. Um, all right. What is going on there? Cool. Okay. So Jose, 3d artist, game artist. Uh, let's look at the portfolio review request just to see, uh, where we at here. Jose environment props, artist. anything. Okay. So he wants me to look at anything. So it's got some substances up front in your resume. Let's see what you say in your resume. Uh, I have to work in a development studio. So um, assuming you grew up in Spain, uh, double check all of your, your grammar and stuff. I'm terrible at grammar. So just you've been, it's okay. <laughs> I'm American and uh, yeah, grammar's terrible. Uh, yeah, self-motivated, good resolution, eager to learn, grow and expand beyond my art discipline. Cool, Maya user, Max user, very cool. That's good, oh, you've done some stuff, cool. Fist of Jesus, dude. Interesting. <laughs> that sounds interesting. Uh, all right, so you've got uh, four substance materials. Let's do a quick gander at these. Um, they look pretty straightforward. This is a uh, personal work. Let's see, it's mud texture. So the only thing I would say with the mud texture, uh, from what I can see, let me scroll through this a little bit more. What I can see so far, oh, this is a good shot to actually talk about it. The, um, mm, I'm gonna copy this. Open up one note, which I think we already got up. Oh, yep, cool. So uh, going off of this, some of the stuff I would note immediately, uh, the footprints are not very visible, these guys. And uh, like they kind of look like footprints, but they're a little too soft around their the pattern of uh, I guess how they're deforming or manipulating the material uh, or the mud, let's say. Um, and then I think I need to change the color of this so that you can see it a little better. The uh, let's make sure this is smaller too. These these lines I think are grass grass blades. They need um, they need some color variation in the albedo. Like you're not really seeing them in the albedo, and they're uh, they seem unimpeded by physics as far as like how they work uh, along the surface of the mud, and then uh, what happens when they're stepped on and stuff like that. Uh, when we get to some of the other stuff, maybe we'll see. Yeah, see, the footprints aren't really reading as footprints. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how we can fix that. I mean, I think maybe the the mud is a little too goopy. Or maybe, like, the really goopy stuff shouldn't have the, the little sinewy grass blade stuff in it as much. And it should be more for the stuff below it. It looks more fleshy for some reason, I guess, in the way that it's it's tearing apart. Like the transition between these two things is, is totally different, right? Um, let's look at the next material. So this one, I would say this one's actually a little bit better just because you're you're getting some definition difference between like where there's rocks and where there's where there's grass, where what the mud is, like where the where the breakup occurs. Uh, in the roughness, like, uh, especially here, like you seeing all this breakup is really good. Uh, some stuff that I would say 
on this is uh, let's go back down here. We'll just let's do that. Hang on, you guys are talking to me in Discord too. Okay, so they're asking about uh, last week's stream being uploaded to YouTube. Uh, I just need to fill out the information on it to make sure that everything's there. Uh, okay, so in this material, you can see the um, these rocks are all very similar in shape. Uh, maybe you're going for a stylized look. Uh, right now, they just they just feel randomly placed versus organically placed if that makes sense like we think organics are pretty random right but they everything has a rule as to how it got to where it is like where how did the big rock get there and how why is the small rocks around it and stuff like that and so like when you look at stuff like that uh keep in mind like how these space out and the uniqueness of their shapes Because right now they're pretty, uh, they're pretty standard sized from each other. They don't vary. Like you've got a small, there's like a small set, a medium, and then the larger ones. And then you some sometimes you get these like strange, slightly larger ones. And I think it's just like the height map of two of them getting really close together and blending together. You have to be really careful about those that happening. Uh, getting a, a greater contrast between the rock and the little pebbles is going to be pretty beneficial to uh, getting some separation between all of your materials. Uh, so keep, keep that in mind that you have three different, you've got grass blade, you've got mud, and then you've got rock or pebbles or stones uh, and getting a roughness variation inside of each of those materials that has a little bit of range and then range that's greater between the three is probably the best approach for getting some really interesting roughness play along the surface of your materials. Dude, talking to myself, like, of course, I'm always talking to myself on stream, right? But uh, for some reason, when it's not streaming, I can, it feels like I'm by myself and like, I can hear myself talking more. How is that even a thing? It's weird. Anyways, uh, these rocks here, the little small pebbles actually in the normal look like they're more, they're flat faced, whereas they shouldn't really like, they're all uniformly the same flatness on the top. Like these are like perfect for trying to skip across water. Right. Uh, let's see here. This is your AO. The AO looks pretty good. I would be careful about AO, uh, in between the grass blades. Cause that's almost more of like a cavity versus AO. The AO is going to be around the rocks primarily or larger shapes that are on the ground versus like under the blades. It's pretty subtle though. So I, I don't know, maybe it's okay. Uh, rocky texture. So this stuff here is really interesting because like it, to me, it comes off more like bone for some reason. And I'm thinking maybe it's the, the albedo and the, the roughness to it. Um, when you're making rock surfaces, they have like a, I'm going to, I'm going to find a good reference for this. Oh, wow. I'm going to, I'm going to bring this over for a second. That's what came up. How cool is that? Crazy. I don't even, I like his tie. <laughs> um, I mean, rock. So I'm going to do just, uh, rock faces. So like when you Google rock faces, you can see, um, there tends to be a direction. Uh, and direction is really important when it comes to stuff like that. Uh, when it comes to trying to replicate a material, uh, specifically rock, of course, like when you're trying to replicate a material, it's really important to find the elements that make it what it is. And with rocks, it tends to be layering, right? Rocks are just layers of, of dense sediment or rock material that's layered on top of itself. So it's like, it's all like, you can, you can see this is all directional. And then when, when it breaks, it tends to break and then come back on itself 
where the direction line meets it, if that makes sense. So like all these are doing this. And then these, these pieces here are just uh, areas where basically it's had the ability to wear through weathering and has, has given way. Now when these give way enough, that's when you start to get this break off here. So it gives like this breaks, breaks up enough and then this piece will fall off. But just remember, it's, it's all directional. It also depends what type of rock you're trying to portray. So when you think about making rock materials, make sure that you know uh, what materials, um, what, what type of rock you're trying to make. I'm going to actually post this in chat and be like, you can kind of follow along. So let's uh, let's see here. So you can see in this rock, it's it's more of like a really close zoomed in uh, bone, if you want to call it that, just because there's no directional. It's all kind of random noise. So I, I would revisit uh, this rock material and try and give it a directionality. Um, just to drive it home, I'll do this. So in here, like in here, you need some type of direction, right? And right now what you have is it's very, it's very random. There's nothing really to grab onto. And I think if you can get more in line with the directionality in the shapes, like doing stuff like this, That'd be good. And it doesn't have to be top right to bottom or top left to bottom right. It can be straight. It can be the other way. It can have a little bit of a wave to it. It's it's all kind of dependent on like how, uh, what type of rock you're trying to portray. Again, make sure you look up what type of rock you're making because they all kind of uh, erode or break away differently. Uh, this brick material looks pretty good. It looks a little soft. In this view, it looks pretty pretty nice compared to this one. I'm not sure why this one looks different from this one. Um, presenting this on a sphere can kind of ruin the, uh, the look you're going for or when you're trying to portray a material like this. Usually because our eyes are like a cylinder works okay. But it's because our eyes are used to seeing this type of material on a flat surface, right? Or flat, it's not really all that flat. Um, but yeah, overall, I think, uh, overall it looks pretty good. Your green channel looks like, looks like you're going between OpenGL instead of DirectX, I think is the, when the green is pointing down. When I say green pointing down, it looks like, if you were to look in the green channel, it looks like the, uh, here, I'll do this. It looks like it's getting underlit. And so if someone tells you your normal maps are flipped, you can just uh, you can just fix it by flipping your or inverting your green channel. Uh, give me a second here, I'll show you. I just installed the new Photoshop, dude. It's uh, it's interesting. It's interesting. I'm liking it though. It's good. It has a weird like intro splash screen, so there's that. Okay, so let's see here. It takes a while to load up too, which is uh, I'm debating if that's no. What is this? No, welcome to Photoshop. I don't. Hello, <laughs> clipboard. Oh, what? That's kind of cool. Okay, so if you go into your green channel, you can see it looks underlit, and if you invert it. Now it actually looks like what you would expect the normal to look like, uh, or the material to look like when it's being lit from the sun, right? So, and that's just the difference of, uh, yeah, switching the green channel around. So this is what it was like before, and this is what it's like uh, with the normal flipped. Uh, I think in general, this material looks pretty good. 
I'm going to copy this. Oh man. This is slow feeling to me, the way f the new Photoshop works. Um, let's just crank these values so we can see. So we can see some of your roughness information. So, oh man, I got to turn that flick panning off too. Uh, overall, your roughness doesn't seem to be flowing with the... Yeah, see, that's interesting. So this this I take as your roughness. Uh, in general, I would I like the variation that you have going on in your bricks. I would suggest uh, separating it in its range from your grout. That way, there's a, a clear distinction between the uh, the two materials. Right? They're both pretty porous or both pretty rough. But if you can get a separation where maybe like the grout is uh, even more rough than almost the roughest brick that you could get some, you could get some nice variation in your material. I think from that, that, and then making sure that like, uh, so right here, you can see there's a little bit of bleed over, uh, where it kind of looks wet. Let's see here. So just making sure that like, Making sure that where this is cuts off and you stay inside color color inside of the shape, right? It's like coloring books. Because most of the time, I mean, this only happens, this bridging of like a wetness look, it only happens with wetness. Uh, or if the entire material was smoothed like super, super smooth. <laughs> so pay attention for that. Um, Let's see what else we got here. So those are your substances. They're, I would say of your substances, this one and this one are your best ones. These two you could actually probably put in either a blog or remove from your portfolio just because they're not portraying your understanding of the two materials currently. The ground texture one, I would suggest uh, revisiting the pebbles a little bit and trying to get some more uh, parity between well, I say parity, but uh, separation between the materials uh, so that you can get some variety in your roughness. So right now your roughness is pretty overall gray. Like if you squint, it's pretty average minus these little darker spots. And those darker spots, see how much that's doing for your, your material? If you can get that kind of variety, not so extreme, but that kind of range and variety throughout your entire material, depending on what material is inside of the material as a whole, uh, that would really push that material uh, into the next, the next stage, the next level. Uh, apothecary bottles. So these are cool. They're interesting. They're interesting looking. Yeah, these, I mean, I don't have much to say on those. They look pretty, look pretty standard. I like the uh, label tear right here. That's pretty cool looking. Uh, let's look at this projector. Looks pretty good. Uh, so with the little, like, uh, these little specks of normal information, uh, I would suggest in your material or your shader to separate out the, uh, I would make that a detail normal. And then I would paint where that occurs and where it doesn't. So basically make like a detail normal mask. That way you can get even more separation between what is like plastic and has those little nick marks in it. And then what is like uh, metal and doesn't like these guys here, I wouldn't expect them to have those little specks on them. I'd expect this to be much smoother and types of details and stuff like that would be in the roughness. Okay, let's keep going. Poly count wise looks pretty looks pretty standard. You could probably add a little bit more to the the ring of the lens. In general, this all looks pretty good. This is interesting. I don't know what that is. Cause it's red. Is that your metalness? I'm not sure what that is. 
Albedo roughness, second one, metalness. Yep, yep, and the last one. It's interesting that you're portraying your metalness in red. Anywho, that might just be because you were packing it in a channel somewhere. Um, you might want to clarify that in the text. This looks pretty good. The metal here, uh, compared to the roughness, looks pretty nice. Again, I'd be careful on like having too much rough information in the normal map. And if you're going to, maybe, again, making it a detail normal that you tile so that you can control the strength of it individual from everything else and then also uh, how much it's tiling because some of it can look low res pretty fast if you're not careful with it. In general, this looks like a pretty nice prop though. And this is red again. I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why this is red. I, it must be a channel pack. Oh, that is really interesting. So seeing your normal, how much uh, it feels like a lot of the information is not needed. And I think you could actually get away with a lot of like these main details and all of this information is just detail normal uh, tiling. Bed looks pretty good. I would age it a little bit in the wood. Uh, dude, this thing is terrifying. This autopsy table. Those are those are blood drain lines and stuff. Ugh. So I'm kind of glancing over this stuff now instead of uh, going pretty detailed into it. But the overall impression I'm getting is that the Song of Horror game was actually a pretty grungy or dirty, high frequency, noisy looking game. Uh, being careful with like how far stuff rusts is is going to be really important. I think though that you might be okay depending on like the rest of the scene. Out of context, it's the it's hard to tell. This looks nice. Yeah, see, I can't tell if there's a detail normal on this, but uh, I would expect this to be more smooth. Or if it was a detail normal, it would be like that kind of like textured plastic that you see with uh, common like appliances that are made of plastic. Um, overall, I would say this is all pretty good. I really want to see an environment from you. I think that uh, overall your portfolio is pretty solid. I just need to know like that you can tell stories with your props and like propping things together and making an, a space look interesting. Um, and then seeing how you how you deal with lighting and, and composition, you know, those are like if you're going to be a props artist, then this is really good. And then I would, I guess I would just put your substances at the end since it's, it's about props. If you want to be a substance artist, then you got to start going crazy. I would suggest looking at uh, Ben Wilson and uh, Josh Lynch. Uh, James Lucas is also an up and coming badass. He's doing some pretty good stuff. You got 3D Kyle. Look that guy up. He's doing good stuff as well. Um, yeah. In general, I'm not sure if you were going for a props artist position, you should, you should be able to get into a place somewhere. Like this is more than enough stuff. They might they might art test you though, just because um, your experience currently is sitting uh, is sitting on some stuff that I mean maybe people wouldn't recognize. This this one cracks me up though. The fist of Jesus, the bloody gospel of Judas. Modeling, texturing, props, that's a, and part of the environment from concept to reference. See, so, you know, in part of the environment, I would love to see some of that. I'd be curious. Anyways, all right. I'm going to switch. I'm going to go to the next portfolio. See you guys in a minute.